morning, my beautiful internet friends, and welcome back to Storytime Saturday. Now, this one is gonna be a little bit intense. I mean, most of them kind of are, but this one in particular, we're gonna talk about the worst surgical experience I've ever had, and ironically, it has absolutely nothing to do with my leg or anything I've ever mentioned before. Also, my hair is doing crazy things today, so we're just gonna, we're gonna pretend that that's the style. It's the messy hair look. Anyways. As we dive in, if you like this video, if you would hit like and subscribe to this channel, that'd be fantastic. It would help me get to 100,000 subscribers, which is a really cool big number, and I would consider it a deep, personal, lasting favor. Without further ado, let's talk about the truly scarring, miserable surgical experience I had. It took place about five years ago. Here's the situation. I've had many health issues over the years, and not just the brain condition, the Chiari malformation, or ankle surgeries. There was a long period of time when I had really intense abdominal pain. I'd have to go to the hospital, they'd run a million tests, and then 24 hours, I'd be okay. Sometimes it would take days to go away, sometimes it'd be like a week. And then there was one point where it just wouldn't stop. I eventually was admitted to the hospital, and after running tests and tests, and I was on drugs for days, and so on and so forth, and nothing was working, like at all. <clears throat> they decided to do a colonoscopy. Super fun to talk about. Yes, yes, I am fully aware. At that point, it was like the only logical thing to do next. So we said, okay, let's go for it. They schedule it for the next day there in that hospital. Had to do like a whole prep for it. And they schedule it for four o'clock in the afternoon. If you know anything about surgeries, you have to not drink or eat usually like midnight the night before surgery. So usually surgeries at like 7 a.m., 9 a.m., something like that. It was at 4 p.m. So I couldn't eat from midnight the night before. It was not, it was not a lot of fun. But anyways, eventually surgery time came and the nurse came up to get me. This started off with a bang because she couldn't get the IV right and so blood like was spurting out of my arm which it's not a big deal like that happens it's part of I'm sure being a nurse but she didn't clean it up but she did not clean it up as in part of my like my right side of my body was drenched in blood as were the sheets that I was on as she continued to try to put the IV in and then wheeled me downstairs. Uh, super not professional or clean. I feel like that breaks a lot of hygienic rules, but I mean, I don't know. So they wheeled me downstairs, like the surgical area. When they got me down there, again, this is a small thing. The bed they put me on, the head was down and like the rest of it was up. So I was like, leaned back in the bed being like, this is not, cool or comfortable, do I have to stay here? Not a big deal. Accidents happen. It was delayed, it was delayed, it was delayed. People were not in a good mood. People were panicked. I was freaked out. I mean, like I was hadn't eaten or drank in hours and was in a lot of pain, but eventually they wheeled me into the surgical room and my dad was with me. And here's where things get a little bit fun. They weren't ready for me. Even after all the delays, they were not ready. It felt like there were like 20 people in that room. I'm sure it was like five to seven. The computer system that they were gonna use was not working. Or like whatever kind of scanning or whatever they do in that surgery, it wasn't working as they brought me into the room. So I was sitting there on the table prepared for surgery as they're like, oh, why isn't this working? Like get someone down here to fix it, blah, blah, blah. And people were like coming in and out. My dad was right next to me. And after like 30 minutes, they were eventually like, okay, we're good to go. And then they brought my dad out of the room and they were still hectic. Like the room was still panicked. It did not feel good. It did not feel like people were in control of things. No one was like talking to me or anything like that. And I started crying. I was really emotional. Like I was scared because they were about to put me under and perform a procedure on me when I felt like they were not remotely prepared or focused. Like everything was so like rushed. Okay, let's do it now. It's working. Let's just get it done. I don't want them to just get me done. I want them to take their time and do a good job with a surgical procedure. And so I started crying and uh, someone actually listened to me and was like, hey, you know what's going on? And I told them I was not comfortable with this proceeding. This does not feel right. I don't feel like you guys are ready. And I got really panicked and was having a hard time breathing but I did say I don't feel comfortable with this. And then lights out, baby. They literally put me under. They just put me under when I was asking them to not, when I was telling them I was not comfortable having that surgery, that experience. Because, you know, if someone is uh, just mouthing off, obviously, and talking when they should just really shut up, just go ahead, go ahead and uh, start up that anesthesia. Make your life easier, right? Because me, as the patient, why would my rights matter? Because their day was obviously hectic. They just needed to get stuff done. I was just another cog on the assembly wheel. Not sure if that analogy makes sense. It made sense in my head for a second there. And that was a huge breach of rights that was super violating to me because I said, don't do this. And they're like, mm-hmm, good night. You know, they didn't even say good night. They literally just put me out. When I woke up, this part's a little weird. Like underwear was not back on all the way. It was like around my knees, which is super freaking weird. And also as someone who has been a survivor of sexual assault, having someone put you out against your will and then you wake up and you aren't properly dressed, that was super triggering to me. And this was years ago before I'd gone through half the counseling I'd gone through now. And so 
I was freaking out. I was like, this is not okay. I am not okay. Nothing about the situation is okay. And when I got back out to my room, I was actually hysterical. Like I've rarely been in my life, like sobbing. Couldn't form words, barely. And when I finally could, I was a wreck. Now, what the hospital's response to me was, which is so very crappy, <laughs> was, uh, you know, it really seems like you're having some psychological issues. Maybe your pain is just related to that. I was hysterical because people had put me out against my will. I'd woken up not fully dressed. I had trauma in my past, which they were aware of, that I had told them about just so they could, you know, be forewarned. I was hysterical because of that. I wasn't hysterical because I was an unstable individual. And so they were like, I think you just need to talk to a counselor. And that made me more upset because I felt like they were just like shoving me off, like writing me off. I told them about the experience I had had, you know, in the surgical room. They didn't take it seriously, which I think is ridiculous, but I, this is one of the few times in my life where I really advocated for myself and my family did too. And we like escalated it to HR or whatever the department is that, that handles this kind of thing. And I filed a formal complaint with the hospital. And you know, six months later, I got a nice letter saying we heard what you said. And it wasn't an actual apology. It was a, we're sorry if we made you feel uncomfortable sort of thing. Not an actually, we're sorry that that happened. In retrospect, I probably should have taken that a lot further because that is a giant, oh, just violation of patient rights and is so messed up to put someone out when they're saying, don't do this. Like, what the heck, guys? Ugh. Honestly, one of the worst parts though is when they were like telling me like, mm, you just need to see a psych person when I was upset about it. Long story short, I wanted to get out of the hospital as soon as I could. So they eventually discharged me pretty soon after that. I was at home for days and a lot of pain, but I wasn't gonna go back there for obvious reason. And eventually the pain subsided. I had abdominal surgery of months after that. They thought maybe it was like endometriosis or something like that. Thankfully it wasn't. And years later, it's pretty much gone. I still have abdominal issues. They never actually found out the root cause, but the frequency got a lot less and now it basically never happens. But that was by far the worst surgical experience I have ever had. I've obviously had ones that were a heck of a lot more painful or difficult to recover from, but things go a lot better when people just like respect you. If you know what I mean, it's not that difficult to do. In Colorado, and I actually looked this up not that long ago, the statute of limitations on filing complaints, filing like legal action against hospitals for things like that is three years. It's been more than three years, so there's nothing I can do about it now, which is fine. But still, isn't that a little bit messed up? Am I the only one who thinks that's a little bit messed up? I feel like that's a little too far. Now, thankfully, I've had lots and lots and lots and lots of experiences with medical professionals and surgery and all kinds of things, and the vast majority have been incredibly positive experiences. You know, situations I didn't necessarily want to be in, but positive experiences because people were great doctors, you know, did their jobs. That was the only experience in which I wanted to just bang my head against a wall and be like, what are you guys doing? This is not okay on any level and you're not taking responsibility for it. But at least I got a letter out of it. Ugh. Super annoying. So this is the worst surgical experience I ever had. How about you? What are some weird or odd experiences you've had with doctors or medical offices or surgeries? I would love to hear them if you feel like sharing them in the comment section down below. And also let's just reflect back for a second. Again, how messed up is that? Like I would never like put someone out against their will. That's so weird. Why would you do that? Maybe I'm a little bitter over it still. Anyways, thank you guys for supporting me and thank you to all my patrons for your financial support and all your lovely comments and messages over there. Today's patron of the day is Megan Windeknecht. Megan, you're a rock star and I adore you. I also know her in real life. So I mean, I can say that. Thank you so much for supporting my channel as well as supporting me. Thank you every Everybody for listening to this Storytime Saturday. Let me know what you think of this series, if you would like it to continue or not. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I love you guys. I'm thinking of you and I'll see you soon. Bye guys. Hand her from the sky.